Welcome to the webinar on securely provisioning cloud resources using Kiverno and Frostplane. Before we get started, just a quick blurb about me. I'm Ritesh Patel, uh, VP Products and Co-Founder at Nirmata. Nirmata is a company behind a popular open source policy engine called Kiverno, and Nirmata provides policy and management and governance solutions uh, around Kiverno. In terms of my background, I have around 20 plus years experience in um, enterprise software, have worked in Motorola, Nortel, Trapeze, Brocade, and also uh, have an MBA from Berkeley as well as a master's in computer science from Michigan State University. So let's jump in. So as you all know, Kubernetes has become that uh, de facto orchestrator for containers. And there's a lot of surveys uh, talking about the adoption of Kubernetes, um, the CNCF survey uh, mentions about 96% of enterprises have either started using Kubernetes or uh, are evalu evaluating it. And what that, what's also happening uh, as Kubernetes becomes ubiquitous is that enterprises are building platforms on Kubernetes. So platform engineering is, is one of the top trends as, as indicated by Gartner, where platform teams uh, are leveraging Kubernetes as that orchestration layer, along with other components, uh, could be open source, could be proprietary components, to build internal developer platforms. And then developers in those organizations are consuming the internal platform. And uh, this really helps developers focus on their applications, focus on their workflows, and not really have to deal with the operations and, and the nitty gritty details of keeping the infrastructure up and running, uh, configuring Kubernetes securely, things of that nature, right? So that's really what's, uh, it's, it's a key trend as, as we see it. Um, there's a lot of, uh, you know, uh, literature, a lot of uh, kind of content out there on, on why platform engineering, the benefits, uh, but we won't get into that. We'll focus more on, on the topic um, on hand. So as, uh, as uh, we know, and you know, as, as we've heard, Kubernetes is, is really effective, really um, you know, um, kind of helpful in, in, in uh, you know, managing applications, containers at scale, but it's also very complex to secure and, and you know, scale the platform itself. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, you know, uh, different uh, surveys that have, that have uh, shown that, you know, in this increase in security issues as, you know, 93% uh, you know, of, of users have reported at least one security incident. Uh, a lot of it is related to uh, misconfigurations because Kubernetes is, is, uh, uh, uses a declarative way of, of defining applications as well as the infrastructure and any misconfigurations could potentially open up uh, uh, an attack vector, right? So that's really why uh, Kubernetes has become very, uh, you know, uh, kind of, it's very difficult to, to scale Kubernetes, especially um, as, as um, you know, the demand grows and as, as the infrastructure itself grows. So uh, Kubernetes becomes more complex to scale, to secure as um, one scales with, uh, scales the infrastructure. Another challenge or another issue is, you know, as, as misconfigurations are, um, are prevalent in Kubernetes uh, and, and one of the top issues, the cost of, of finding these misconfigurations tends to be high if, if these misconfigurations are found late in your development cycle, right? So um, there's research that shows that misconfigurations are um, orders of magnitude costly to fix in production instead of, you know, finding them early in your, you know, coding or testing cycle. And, and that itself is, is, a, is a huge challenge and, and something that enterprises are looking to address. So in the next few slides, we'll talk about how some of these issues can be solved using a combination of open source projects like uh, Crossplane and Kibarn. So Crossplane is a, is a Kubernetes, uh, is an open source project. Uh, it's a Kubernetes native, uh, you know, provisioning en engine for uh, 
cloud resources, right? So it, it allows you to provision um, cloud resources or, or it could be other applications. It's, it can be, it's actually very extensible um, and, and enables infrastructure as code. So basically you can, it, 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 uh, it defines a set of uh, custom resource definitions that these controllers, um, you know, monitor, and then you can uh, use Kubernetes native YAML to describe the resources and the controllers will, um, you know, once those, the, the YAML is uh, applied to the cluster, the controllers will provision those resources based on the configuration described in the YAML. Uh, the benefit of this approach is that you can leverage full power of Kubernetes, like policies, namespaces, you know, role-based access controls, and so on. It also allows you to, you know, um, it, it, it can actually, uh, you know, monitor state of your resources, and it can reconcile those resources from the, uh, from, uh, from, from the cloud, right? So that gives you, uh, you know, a view into the, the health or the status of your resources. Um, another benefit of using Crossplane is, you know, creating abstraction. So you may have, if you want to, you know, deploy multiple resources, you can create um, an abstraction to deploy multiple cloud resources with a, with a single um, uh, signal abstracted YAML. And um, now, because this is uh, done in a Kubernetes native manner, uh, it also allows uh, for security and compliance to be enforced uh, at the at at, at, at the uh, the API level, level at the Kubernetes level without exposing that complexity to developers. So, really enables that self service uh, uh, approach that enterprises are looking for. And uh, uh, the community, the Crossplane community, has uh, you know providers for popular clouds like AWS, GCP, Azure, so on. So for, for enabling uh, developer self-service using Crossplane, um, kind of the way typically it's done is by creating uh, uh, compositions, Crossplane compositions, to abstract all in infrastructure requirements uh, that are needed to provision um, a particular you know, service or, or, or a particular kind of resource in, in the cloud, right? So for example, if you want to provision um, you know, a, a cluster in the cloud, you may need, you know, to provision virtual uh, VPN, uh, uh, private networks, maybe you need to provision subnets, security groups, all of that can be, complexity can be abstracted away from the developer and the developer can just focus on, um, you know, providing some basic information um, for, for the resource and all of the details can be handled uh, through composition. So that makes it really help, useful for enabling developer self-service for cloud resources. So next, let's look at Kiverno. So Kiverno is a, a policy inform, enforcement uh, a policy engine, and it can enforce policies in, in Kubernetes clusters. So Kiverno is a CNCF um, incubating project, and it, it, it runs as an admission controller in each cluster. So Kiverno policies are written as Kubernetes native YAML and can be um, uh, stored or, you know, in, in Git or can be applied uh, directly. Uh, and, uh, you know, when, when these policies are applied, uh, depending on how the policies are configured, uh, Kiverno can validate, mutate, or generate configurations based on, on policies. You can also uh, these policies typically are used to uh, prevent misconfigurations, to ensure you know compliance with uh, the enterprise standards or the or you know uh, uh, industry standards, and these policies can also be used to automate developer workflows. Um, uh, several examples in the community of policies that can do automation. For example, when a new namespace is created, it, you know you can generate other resources that may be needed um, for that namespace. Uh, in, in, in the community, there's tons of examples of policies, um, you know, right from power security policies to workload security, RBAC, multi-tenancy, et cetera. So next, let's look at the Kiverno architecture. Uh, so Kiverno is a, a, a 
it, it runs as an admission controller. So it, it uh, you know, it, when it is deployed, webhooks are configured, uh, you know, validating and mutating webhooks are configured so that Kiverno can receive um, every request that's made to the API server. And then Kiverno um, has a collection of uh, uh, controllers which then act on the AP on that request depending on the on the policy. So it, you know, there's a controller that can apply a policies to that uh, to the API request. There's a background controller which can keep checking if if uh, if any of the policies have been um, you know violated uh, you know uh, by any of the existing resources. So there's uh, uh, there's a lot of um, kind of checks. Uh, uh, that Kiverno does to ensure that the 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 all the resources are um, meet the meet the policy requirements, and if if they don't, then Kiverno um, reports uh, policy uh, violations in in the policy reports. Um, you can also uh, specify exceptions, policy exceptions. That's a new capability that was added to Kiverno recently. In case you want certain resources, certain namespaces to be uh, uh, kind of, uh, uh, you know, excluded from uh, these policies, policy exceptions can be used. But overall, the architecture is designed to um, uh, handle the load um, that, that you know, in, in very large clusters. So it's highly distributed, uh, highly available. There are separate controllers performing separate tasks. So if one controller, um, you know, uh, it has issues, it doesn't impact uh, other controllers. And then the common reporting layer uh, provides uh, the, the ability to kind of get the reports uh, in, in, in your cluster and then through other tools, uh, you know, make those reports available uh, outside the cluster as well. So as, as you saw, both Kiverno and Crossplane are Kubernetes native tools. And uh, one uh, Crossplane is for in infrastructure as code uh, for provisioning resources. Kiverno is, uh, is for policy as code. And there are several benefits of using Kubernetes native approaches uh, in your platform you know, for uh, uh, developer self-service, um, uh, for you know, automation, and so on, right? So, one of the benefits is um, obviously they are since they are Kubernetes native, they're using uh, they le it, uh, leverage the Kubernetes API machinery. Uh, a lot of the resources are defined as uh, using CRDs. So as a Kubernetes user, the learning curve is is very low, right? So you can use familiar tools, you can use kubectl, you can use Helm, um, you can use GitOps to to deploy uh, uh, some of these YAMLs. Um, also out of the box, there's integration with external projects. For example, there's endpoints for collecting Prometheus metrics. There is um, ability to use, you know, Argo CD for deploying some of these uh, policies or, or other cloud resources. And then, you know, both Kiverno and, and Crossplane project have huge communities, uh, as well as an ecosystem that helps uh, if, if, if you need any help, um, you know, uh, or run into any issues. So uh, a community can help with, um, you know, issues. A community also builds, you know, tools, adapters, providers, extensions around these uh, pro uh, uh, core projects. And then there are commercial companies supporting uh, these projects uh, like Nirmata for Kiverno, like Upbound for Crossplane that can, uh, that can also help if needed, right? So there's lot of benefits to using Kubernetes native approach when um, building developer platforms. So now let's let's focus on the use case um, uh, that we were uh, we initially started the, the discussion with right so self-service cloud provisioning so we'll have have a demo of this uh, use case a little bit later but before that let's look at how uh, through cr using crossplane uh, a developer can uh, provision a cloud resource, right? So here I have a management cluster where uh, Crossplane is installed. It's a Kubernetes cluster. Um, you know, I can see the API server as well as the database. And then there's a, uh, on the right, you have your, you know, cloud services. In this case, uh, we look at AWS. And then the developer, uh, let's say in this case, developer wants to create an S3 bucket. So 
the developer would uh, specify the YAML to create the S3 bucket. Uh, we'll see what it looks like, but it's essentially a custom resource definition in uh, in in the cluster uh, configured by uh, created by crossplane uh, controllers, and then when the developer creates the S3 bucket, uh, you know the, the crossplane controller and, and and the AWS provider that's that's uh, uh, part of the the, the crossplane uh, uh, one of the crossplane components will actually detect the creation of um, uh, the the custom resource and it will trigger the creation of S3 bucket in the uh, using the AWS API, right? So that's kind of pretty straightforward. Uh, the developer uh, applies the YAML and the controller, the cross main, the provider actually picks it up and creates the S3 bucket. It actually even, you know, periodically um, uh, synchronizes with the configuration in the cloud and the developer will, will uh, uh, will you know by looking at the, the the custom resource, the developer would know if uh, the bucket has been created or not. Right. In case of any errors, the developer would uh, know if that you know would, would see the error um, in 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 the CLI. So next, uh, now the challenge with this is obviously you know. Uh, any configuration, any cloud configuration has a lot of different knobs, a lot of different um, uh, configuration parameters that have have to be uh, kind of you know approved, checked, verified uh, to ensure that these these uh, uh, you know the configuration is not insecure. Um, for example, the S3 bucket being created is not uh, public. Um, the S3 bucket uh, you know information uh, or, or or any operation is being logged. There's a whole bunch of things that uh, a platform engineer may want to do or secure other maybe security requirements, you know, to, to, and, uh, to be enforced. So for that, uh, now this is where uh, Kiverno would come in and uh, help with um, enforcing some of these or, or setting some of these guardrails as well as enforcing some policies, right? So um, in this case, uh, now the kind of the model changes a little bit. You have a cluster, a management cluster with Crossplane and Kiverno both installed. Um, and then the platform engineer can create these policies beforehand, may add these policies um, into the cluster, and then the Kiverno control, uh, uh, controllers will um, start monitoring the, the API server requests. And anytime any resources created that match the policies, um, it will apply the policies and and, uh, and and allow or deny those requests depending on how the policies are configured, right? So once the policies are configured, now the developer workflow remains the same, but before the cross plane controller can act on those um, uh, custom resources, in this case, creating the S3 bucket, Kiverno can intercept and, and uh, apply the policies. Uh, and then if the policies, all the policies are um, successful, successfully applied and, and there are no issues, then uh, uh, the request is uh, completed and then the cross plane controller can actually uh, start um, processing the request and creating the S3 bucket. So that's kind of the flow. It's uh, it, by adding these policies now you have been able to set the guardrails and enforce uh, various checks uh, as needed um, in the developer workflow. And, and all of this without without you know having develop developer having to learn anything uh, any policy violations will actually be available to the developer uh, directly they don't have to uh, learn or know about um, kiverno at all so let's uh, jump into the demo So I have a cluster um, that um, is already configured and it has um, Kiverno, it has um, Crossplane already deployed. So, um, so before we start um, actually uh, verifying uh, the policies and, and, and seeing how it works, let's look at the, uh, the policies and the configuration, right? 
So, so I have um, here, I have a set of policies uh, for S3. And these are, uh, these policies are, um, you know, written in YAML. Uh, they operate on, on uh, this bucket uh, resource, uh, which is um, a custom resource defined by, uh, by the AWS provider, the cross plane AWS provider. And um, uh, there's various checks, you know, this policy checks for version, this policy checks if uh, the S3 bucket is uh, configured to access um, for public access. Uh, we have a uh, check here, you know, for region. Um, another check uh, here for uh, if notification is enabled, and then we have a check for login, right? And then I have two different, uh, uh, you know, S3 buckets, and I'm, I'll try to create one in US East two, and another one in US West one, and we'll see how these um, these um, whether these get created and and what happens, right? So let's go back to the command line and I'm in the S3 policies repo. To apply these policies, um, just going to uh, apply all the policies in my folder. So uh, it will take a couple of seconds for these policies to be applied. Once the policies are applied, you can actually um, see these policies um, and, and make sure that they are ready. So here, all of these policies are ready, um, and we can see which some of them are in enforce mode, others are in audit mode. So now, uh, let me go to the resource folder, and let me try to apply the policy that, or the, or the, the YAML to create S3 bucket in um, the East region. Um, actually, before I do that, let me show you uh, what's running in the uh, cross-plane uh, namespace. So here you can see um, the cross-plane system namespace. We have uh, the cross-plane components, and then we have a provider for the AWS cloud. And um, uh, and if I do get uh, CRDs uh, and grab on cross-plane, you will see all the CRDs that are installed in my cluster, and a lot of all of these or most of these are related to the AWS um, uh, provider, right? So these are created by AWS provider. These map to AWS resources. So, for example, the one of the the, the custom resource that is uh, available here is is the bucket resource. So we'll be creating that um, resource in the AWS. Um, uh, in, in our AWS account. So let's let's go ahead and do that. All right, so this, so when I try to create this resource, I get some violations, right? So because I'm trying to create this resource in, in US East, I have a policy which prevents me from doing that, uh, which is this policy. And then there are some other policy violations that are also um, that are also uh, triggered because my uh, uh, bucket is not configured correctly, right? The configuration for my bucket does not meet the policy requirements. So that's kind of how, you know, immediately developer gets feedback that, you know, they cannot configure this S3 bucket. So let's, let's now try to configure the other uh, S3 bucket uh, in the U.S. West region. So let's see if this works. So yeah, in this case, the S3 bucket got created. And if I do, um, if I check uh, buckets, and I should see that my S3 bucket, the class brain S3 bucket is created. So maybe uh, just to verify, I can go to the AWS account. And in my account, I can see my demo vest, uh, S3 demo vest bucket. Is created. So that kind of shows you now with, with this, um, the S, S3 bucket got, got created. It had, uh, it pretty much uh, had all the configuration that was correct. We can actually see if there are any um, uh, policy vi violations. Uh, and in this case, we actually see uh, that 
four of these passed, but then there was one uh, audit violation which failed, uh, which was around um, the event notifications being enabled. So it failed and it actually, uh, but it since it was set in audit mode, uh, we could go ahead and create the S3 bucket, right? So if you enforce policies in enforce mode will prevent um, the creation of the bucket, but if it's in audit mode, um, the, the, the resource gets created, but then you have a policy violation. And you can actually look at the policy violation in more detail um, by just using this command. So it tells you that this 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 message tells you what happened and why it failed. Great. So net now the other other aspect about using crossplane is you can also use crossplane to actually um, uh, discover or 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 you know find resources or uh, from from your cloud account, right? So crossplane has the ability to adopt resources, and you can do that and and. Um, and in, in that case, uh, and you can still apply policies, even though those resources are already created in your cloud account, you can apply policies and, and make sure that um, there are no policy violations, right? So we, what we'll do here is um, we'll go to um, our, uh, S, uh, from, we'll go to the Elastic uh, ECS account and, and, and just check in our ECS account, we have, um, any uh, uh, have some task definitions and we'll adopt one of those task definitions and uh, try and uh, make sure that we are able to validate it and, and, and in case it has any and check if it has any issues right so we have this ECS task definition created in my uh, ECS account so in order to do that let's go back to the ECS folder and uh, what we'll first do is um, we will apply these policies. So I have, um, so let's go look at the policies first. So here in the, in the ECS account, ECS, uh, uh, for ECS, we have two policies uh, to check if the image is coming from specific registry. And then we also have policy to check uh, the task definition and to make sure that the CPU and memory are uh, you know, configured within uh, the specified uh, limits, right? So, and I know I've purposely kept the limit low so that we can, some policy violations can be triggered. So first, uh, let's apply these policies. So if I do kubectl get cpol, I should see that I have now two policies and both of them are in audit mode because here we just want to detect we are not going to enforce anything because uh, the resources are already created. So let's go to the resource uh, folder and here I'm going to just import the task, uh, uh, the task definition. So before we do that, let's look at the task definition YAML. So this is a very basic YAML. It just specifies the name of the task, the region, um, and, and, and only the required fields, right? So here we are gonna just specify the required fields. And uh, because it has this um, uh, annotation called cross-plane external name, it's actually going to uh, just pull down the, um, the uh, uh, configuration of the task and add it uh, in the, in the custom resource. And also we've created, uh, configured the deletion policy as orphan, which means when this task definition is deleted from the cluster, it won't actually delete the, the class definition from the, the cloud. Uh, and this, this can be configured either way, but in this case, I've just done it to make sure that the original uh, task definition is not deleted. So, kubectl create minus F, um, import task definition. Okay, so now let's look at the object itself. All right, so I have, we have this task definition and we can actually um, get more details. Uh, in, if you go look at the YAML format, 
um, it's still synchronizing and it, it, it's getting additional information from the cluster. So this could take uh, a few minutes. So let's maybe check again. Okay, so now we see all of the configuration for the task has been pulled down. Uh, there's a lot more information here. And so now let's see if there are any policy violations. All right, so we see two, we see one failure and um, one a uh, couple of errors, but in case of this failure, let's look at the failure. And this failure, this um, policy uh, violation is for image check. So because the image for the task is not coming from the registries that I, uh, we would like, uh, this violation is triggered and it says all the image uh, images for this task definition should come from an authorized repository, right? So this is a way to actually apply policies uh, even to existing resources by using you know, Crossplane and Kiverno. Uh, Crossplane will actually synchronize those resources and then Kiverno will apply those policies. So just to summarize, um, as you saw in the demo, you can use uh, Kiverno along with Crossplane to enable secure self-service for developers. You can set the necessary guardrails um, uh, when, when uh, developers are provisioning cloud resources using Crossplane. Uh, Kiverno can provide the necessary uh, pol policy enforcement, um, audit, um, compliance uh, for your cloud resources, and then uh, the, the, the benefit of doing this proactively in, um, in, uh, and while, while provisioning these resources is you can pretty much prevent misconfigurations, you can overall improve security posture, and uh, by preventing these misconfigurations uh, and not having to deal with them you know, later on in, in your production environments, um, you effectively uh, you know, save costs as well, right? So that's kind of the overall benefit. And this, in the end, leads to a much better developer experience uh, without any uh, back and forth, without any friction that uh, may typically be involved in, in such scenarios. So that's it for this webinar. Um, please uh, give us some feedback, reach out to us if you have questions. Uh, and would love to hear from you if this was helpful or if um, there are any other uh, topics that you would like to hear from us. Thank you.